this is this is my favorite chemistry topic. We are today we are starting kinetic theory, and we are starting kinetic theory, which is uh, the kinetic theory of matter, the kinetic theory of matter. So, into your notebook, you want to create a major heading called kinetic theory of matter, kinetic theory of matter. If you uh, want to follow along, you can go to the content page of the learning management system and that will bring you to this page. Kinetic theory of matter. In this video, this first of three videos that we're going to do today, in this video we're going to look at the basic assumptions of the kinetic theory of matter. Basic assumptions. There will be four basic, theory, basic assumptions, but right in the middle, we have to develop an understanding of this concept called temperature. So we're going we're gonna to go through, we're going to do this uh, um, assumption, assumption, and then we're going to talk about temperature, and then that's going to feed back into the other two uh, of the assumptions. The first assumption will not surprise you. Do not be surprised. You will not be surprised by this. Because you've had science classes before, and we know that all matter is made of particles. Now, there are two kinds of fundamental particles that matter is made of. One is an atom, and the other is a molecule. And so I'm going to say particles or molecules most of the time, because if it's an atom, an atom, I guess, is like a subset of a molecule. So if I say this aluminum block is made of aluminum molecules, it would be the same as saying aluminum atoms, or saying made of a of aluminum particles. Particles is kind of the general thing. So the assumption is all matter is made of particles. So that's the first thing that you will put into your notes. All matter is made of particles. Anybody, I mean, you had this before in science. Atoms, compounds, those are, you know, particles. And you say, but I cannot see the particles. I would like to see some, some aluminum particles. Well, I'm sorry, I, can't, I can't really do that because they're atoms. There is a picture that I can share with you that will depict that. And what we have is these big purple, these big green blobs and these little purple blobs. I'm guessing chlorine and sodium because, you know, I'm just guessing. They always do chlorine is green. So here you have this, this block of salt. We got Molecule, so we atom, 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 and then we have like layers of all these things. So this is kind of the thing. And you say, but it's not moving. It is not moving, but the little purple guy, he's vibrating in place. And the green guy, vibrating in place. And this guy, vibrating. And all of them are vibrating in place. So the second assumption is that all particles are in constant motion, okay? Everything's in constant motion. Even though the, the block isn't moving anywhere, the particles inside the matter, the particles inside the block are moving, and that's this little, like, they're, they're wiggling, they're wiggling in place. One of the questions in the assessment is going to use the phrase wiggling in place. Does that make sense? So assumption one, everything is made of particles. Assumption two, all of those particles are moving in constant motion. They're constantly moving around. The air molecules in this room are all moving around. The air molecules in this room are all moving around. Okay. The next two assumptions rely on us understanding what temperature is. And so we've got to do this kind of like sidebar, little box over on the side. And in that little box on the side, you're going to do temperature. And we're going to talk about temperature for a couple of moments. Okay, everybody ready? Temperature? So you're ready? We're going to talk about temperature and how, how we get to this concept of temperature. So any sample, the, the particles are moving. And somebody goes, you know, it would be kind of cool if we could measure how those particles are moving around. Like, these maybe are moving more than these. And so... They, they begin to, to work through this concept. So if they're moving, they have energy. They have kinetic energy. And that kinetic energy 
is, is understood by this ex formula that you do not need to understand yet. This will be a second semester formula. So here's the way it works. The mass of something stays the same. The kinetic energy of something then is related to velocity. Does anybody play football? All right, Mr. Dunn, you play football. And what's your last name? DeVolt. 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 So he, you're standing on the 20 yard line. Dunn is running at you in a kind of leisurely, slow pace. And as he approaches you, he drops his shoulder pads into your number and you take it in the chest. A moment later, he is sprinting at you full on as fast as he can sprint, drops his shoulder, puts him in your numbers. Which would you prefer, the slow, leisurely jog or the full on sprint? It's intuition. You want the slower because if V is less, energy is less. But you were going to say something negative about his football ability. I was going to say he's pretty slow in the first place. He's pretty slow in the first place. So, and the, and the debate, the debate ensues. If, anybody have like a two-year-old sibling, three-year-old cousin, little would you rather your cousin hit you with a baseball or would you rather a major league pitcher hit you with a baseball? Because then you could brag and say, I was hit by a major league pitcher. And, and people would be impressed. And then there's the financial considerations. Velocity, this is just common sense. As velocity goes up, we're going to understand that energy goes up, right? That makes sense. There's no, no surprise here. This is not one of those things. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Energy goes up when velocity goes up. So the definition of temperature is the average kinetic energy of all of the particles in the sample. So all, so they're not all going the same, the, the same velocity. Okay, so let's get this idea of average temperature, the average kinetic energy. So what do you think the average age in the classroom is? I'm 56. 14. Oh, uh, 28.4. So the 56 is going to pull it up a little bit. Yeah. Is anybody 15? Is anybody 14? Anybody 13? Anybody 16? All right, so we're not all the same age. But the average is probably like 14 and a half or 15 or something. And even though there's one old dude... That doesn't make the whole average go up. Likewise, the molecules of air in the classroom, the average temperature is 73.1 degrees Fahrenheit, thermometer. So that means this guy's going 73, and this guy's going 75, and this guy's going 769, and there's a guy up here who's 100, and this molecule is only going 40, and this one over here is going 65. They're all different. They're all different temperatures, but the average of the entire set of molecules in this space is 73.2. 73.2. So the average, so back to our block of salt. So this guy, he might be going, you know, I'm making up numbers here, 20. He might be going 50. He might be going 70. And, he might, and then we're going to take the average of that and call that the temperature of this block of salt. Question. So like when you're outside on a really warm day and then you feel like a warm gust of air, is that because those particles are like moving faster? So if you feel, if you literally feel a warm gust of air like sitting in front of the heater, the molecules coming out of the heater have a higher average kinetic energy than the molecules in the room around them. Or a gust of heat. Now we have outside we have another thing we have radiation to deal with which is not just the feeling of the molecules but that's going on outside as well. Very good question. Very good question. Average kinetic energy is temperature, so now we can kind of play around with that in our other two assumptions of kinetic theory. If the temperature goes up, by definition, the kinetic energy goes up. If kinetic energy goes up, according to the formula, velocity goes up. So temperature goes up, kinetic energy goes up, velocity goes up, right? Does that make sense? The formula said that if energy goes up, velocity goes up. The definition says if temperature goes up, energy goes up. So energy goes up, temperature goes up, energy goes up, velocity goes up. Make sense? Third assumption. 
The, the higher the temperature, the more kinetic energy they have. All particles are in constant motion. The higher the temperature, the faster they are moving. The higher the temperature, the faster they are moving. Everybody good? And therefore, the fourth assumption, the faster they move, anybody have, like, we're back to that toddler cousin running through the living room. Anybody visualize it? So the toddler is kind of like working their way around the coffee table. And they take up about that much space, right? And then they get to the point where they're like, they're running across, the, they're running from the coffee table to the, the toy box. And what do toddlers do? They take up a lot of space when they're moving fast. They wobble this way and they wobble that way. Anybody have a puppy? Puppy's laying in the floor, he takes up a little bit of space. And then when he chases his tail, he takes up a lot of space. We have a mutt, we have a, a dog that is, he's, he's half Labradoodle and he's half German Shepherd St. Bernard. So he's, he's, he's a mutt, so like one of the parents was a German Shepherd St. Bernard, the other was a Labradoodle. This dog is like eight months old, he's about, he's probably 80 pounds. And he gets, he gets in his mind that, it's, that he, it's time to run amok. And he literally crashed into the wall and, his, and he, he caved in the sheetrock. Oh, when he is doing that tail chasing thing, it is like, you got to just get out of the house. He's going to break your knee. That's what we're talking about. The faster they go, the more space they take up. Molecules and puppies. The faster they're moving, the more space they take up, right? Okay, so we all understand. So temperature, temperature goes up, kinetic energy goes up, definition. Kinetic energy goes up, velocity goes up, formula. Velocity goes up, space goes up. If the velocity goes up, the space that they take up also goes up. Make sense? No, no surprise. So those are the four assumptions of the kinetic theory. Any questions about the four assumptions of kinetic theory? That will bring the first video to a close. So those of you who are watching the video, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to the channel, sign up for notifications, leave me a comment, question. We'll see you in the next episode.